Hey YouTube, what's up? This is Nate here, and yesterday at Google's second I.O. keynote address, they announced Google Chrome for iOS devices. So you can now download this application for free from the App Store for your iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch. So I'm a big fan of Google Chrome on the desktop, so now I'm really excited to see that it's been brought over to iOS as well. So what I'm going to do in this video is demo this application for you, and then we're going to talk about how it compares to the built-in mobile Safari in iOS. So let's go ahead and open it up. And the first thing that we're going to take a look at is the unified search bar. So if you've ever used Google Chrome on the desktop, you'll be very familiar with how this works. So if I just type in Apple and do not put the .com, it's going to assume that it's a Google search. So then if we put Apple.com, sorry about that, Apple.com, it's going to take us over to the web page. So what they're doing is they've integrated the Google search engine and the URL address bar into one. So if you don't put the .com, it'll automatically do a Google search. If you do, it'll take you right over to that web page. I think this is implemented much better than the way that Mobile Safari does it because you have two uh, search bars that you have to use instead of just one unified one you'll find in Google Chrome. Now we'll head back to that original web page that we were on here and take a look at these tabs at the bottom. So what you've got here is your recently closed tabs. So you'll see I recently had eBay open. If I select this icon, it'll take me right to that website. We head back here, then the next tab is bookmarks. So any bookmarks that you add will appear in a list on this tab right here. And then you've got other devices. So if you guys have watched any of my iOS 6 demo videos, you might have heard of the iCloud tabs feature. Uh, this works exactly like that feature does. So I have Google Chrome on my iPad, and you'll see the web pages that I have open on there. And if I select any of these web pages, it'll go ahead and open it up right here for me. Next, then, we'll take a look at the speak to search feature that they have right here. So you can just say anything you want. ESPN.com and you'll see it uh, did bring up the web page that I asked for. If you don't want to use that feature, uh, the voice feature right there, you can also use the dictation that Apple has built into the keyboard. Next then we're going to take a look at these options that you've got right here. So you can open up a new tab right from here. If you select that, you'll see that I now have two web pages open. If you want to close this tab out then, all you have to do is simply swipe it away and it will be removed. So that's a really nice animation. Up here then you have refresh and then if you want to add a bookmark, you select that star icon right there. The new incognito tab is exactly like private browsing in mobile Safari, so it won't keep track of any of your search history or any of the web pages that you have open. But what's nice about this is that you can have uh, an incognito tab, but also a regular tab open at the same time. Unlike in Safari, where you have to have all of your web pages uh, enabled for private browsing. And you can tell that incognito is enabled because you'll see it's a dark blue up here, and uh, it's white when it's not incognito mode. So let's just go ahead and exit this out then. And we'll head back to this web page. Take a look at the other options we have here. So you view your bookmarks, other devices. You can email the web page. You can find something in the web page. So uh, let's just see what words we have here. So nothing, we'll see. We'll just type that in right here. And you'll see that it has highlighted that for me. And it says they're one of one, so that's how many times it's appeared on the page. If you select any of these arrows, it'll take you to the other times that word appears on the page as well. We'll take a look at the other options we have here. Uh, so we've got request a desktop site. So you can currently see I'm on the mobile ESPN website. If I select request desktop, it's going to take me to the desktop version of ESPN.com. This is a really nice feature because a lot of uh, mobile web pages do allow you to go to the desktop version as well. But you have to search on that web page to find where that um, link is. This will just allow you to do it right away from the options menu. So that's nice. Uh, we'll see what other options that we have then. So we've got settings and then the help option. So we'll try out settings. So in here you can sign into your Google Chrome account. Once you do this, it'll sync all the tabs that you have open among all of your devices. For your search engine, you can choose between Google, Yahoo, and Bing. You can have it save your passwords. For voice search, you can select your language. You can clear, clear your browsing data information, and it'll give you all these options, or you can clear all of that. Uh, you can report an issue. You've got privacy settings content settings right here so you can uh, block pop-ups and you can choose whether or not you want to accept cookies. So this has been a look at the Google Chrome web browser now available for iOS. In my opinion it's got a lot more options available than mobile Safari. I think the only downside to this application is it will never be the default web browser that you can use in iOS. So if you ever try to open up a link from an email or text message it'll be opened up in mobile Safari. However if you do have a jailbroken device you can download a tweak from Cydia called Browser Chooser and that will allow you to make Google Chrome your default uh, web browser in iOS. So if you guys have downloaded this application, let me know what you guys think about it in a comment down below, and I will see you guys in the next video.